matter, still the same thing. We have our main earthing conducted down here on the earth electrode. We must test the earth electrode, not to the earth clip, because that could have a high resistance. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, check my meter, do a battery check, that's okay. All right, then I'll go to three ohms. I'll short the leads together. Make sure it reads zero. If I have to adjust it, we use this area here. We don't use this one down here. This is our adjustment zero here. Why would I have to adjust it? Because what happens is I could have a 20 meter trailing lead running out and we need to zero out the lead resistance. Does that make sense? So don't think you're just doing it for a short lead like this. You could have a 20 meter lead running down the road around the house doing stuff and you need to zero out the meter, all right? The leads, I should say. So I've done that. It's reading zero, happy with that. So I'm gonna leave it on three ohms. I'm now gonna swap this. You've got a clamp at the other end. I'll put that on the main earth. I don't need to disconnect the MEN at the moment because we're not doing testing of insulation. Do you understand what I'm getting at? We're just checking continuity of earth so that goes from A to B. So I'm gonna come down to here, put on the earth stake. I'll have a quick look what I've got down here. And it's coming up and it's more than what we call half an ohm. Okay, so on the three ohm scale, so it's probably reading close to two and a half. That's definitely a fail, all right? Where do I find a half an ohm? Section 0.82, verification and stuff like that. It's got a flow diagram in there too. It says main earth, sub earths, all that stuff. You can follow it through and all that stuff. So we have, we're gonna do that one, that fails. I would write that result down here on my sheet, pass or fail, so write the result, pass or fail. They're not asking for a reason why it's high. They just wanna know the result. The next one we're gonna do, we do here, we check the bonding conductor, that's reading nearly zero. So there's very little result there. Sorry, no 0.5 or yeah. it's well under that, so it's not zero. We know that passes, so the bonding conductor's doing its job. The main earth has a high resistance, so that's gonna be a problem, all right? So we've done those two. We've done bonding, uh, main earth conductor, bonding conductor. It now asks about the uh, insulation resistance for the whole installation. I just want to miss that for the moment and we'll come back because I don't want to swap from ohms to 500 back and forth all the time. If we go down to the next one, it's asking insulation resistance of an appliance, which is this item here. We'll come back to that as well. We're going to go to the last section, one, one last thing on the page that says resistance of protective earthing conductors. So what we're doing is we're going to measure the resistance of the earth from the earth bar, all right, to the fluorescent, so up here, from the earth bar to the fluorescent, to meet earth points and all my sockets and that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the resistance to the active, go to 8.2, find out what the what we call the fault loop impedance, because fault loop impedance is from the active or the circuit breaker load side, down to my power point. So they've already given us the active, if you see on that last list. We're then gonna go, all right, we need to get the earth resistance. So we're gonna go from the earth pin back to the earth bar and then write down that value. We add the two together. So say for example, it adds up to 1.4, and the book says table 8.2 for a C breaker, says table 8 point, uh, sorry, 1.6. It said, okay, if it was more than 1.6, it would be then a fail. Does that make sense? So now I'm gonna go from here, all right? Well, so what's the first thing it's asking for? Ceiling rows, right? I'm gonna go to ceiling rows, earth, have a look, that in here. All right, that's reading zero. So I'd probably put down close to 0.1, but it's actually really close to zero. All right, I've done that one. What's the next one? Fluorescent, I'll go to that. That's reading zero as well. Then the next one is socket outlet one, two, and three. So I'll work my way through there with the earth pin. And we work our way through. Once we've got all our values, we then go to the book as our reference material. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Table 8.2. Add the two together, see if they pass or fail. Are we all happy with that test? All good. The next one we're gonna do is go to the whole installation now. So I'm now gonna select 500 volts. 500 volts is twice the pressure of DC. Sorry, DC is twice the pressure of AC, so it's 230 volts AC. We're now gonna to go to four, 500 volts, all right? I've set down my 500 volts. I need to disconnect the MEN link now because we're gonna test the whole installation. I'm just gonna to touch that on the earth there to see if it goes back to zero. Perfect, I know my, it's reading zero. I don't, and you can't calibrate it on, um, on mega ohms anyway, because it's 500 volts. The zero adjustment doesn't do anything with the zeroing part, all right? It only does it on ohms. Okay, I'm gonna leave that just unlocked for a minute. 
I want to now come back, do the whole installation. We need to cross out, we need to bridge this out. Why? Because our amp meter line coming in or low, our amp meter part for our kilowatt hour meter, the current will go through this loop, through here, and the voltage difference will be across these two here. Do you understand what I'm getting at? P equals V times I. This is the V part, this is the amp I part, all right? Add them two together, we get a power meter, and that's what we have to do. So, I'm gonna put this across here, because doing the whole installation includes the pick cables, the pick cables from here to here, and it also includes going back to the main switchboard. It's easier to do it here than trying to crawl on my belly in the bloody pit, or an aerial climbing up on a ladder, so we do it at the switchboard part. I'm now gonna loop the neutral, all right, to the active. And now means my active and neutral at the same potential. I didn't have to join the active, the neutral because underneath here on the neutral link, the neutral comes up.